Baker. Thank you, Tammy Sue Baker, <laughs> and welcome you. everyone to our Hi. show. Hi there. Our special guest today is Dr. Billy Brim yeah. and her daughter, yeah. and we're excited because we've got. Uh, it, it is a very important show we're doing today, Amen. That's right. and I want you to pay attention. I want you to be able to be a part of it because I believe that Billy Brim has a message for us Amen. to be a part of evangelism, to be a yeah. part of winning souls, Amen. to be a part of helping people in this time. Amen. And we got a couple of our little friends here with us. <laughs> They're our kids. Now and, that the, now that uh, our kids oh are all boy. grown up and moved out of the Can house. You <laughs> These are our two kids. All the kids we had, and now we have two dogs. Uh, all we got and left. there are there. So, they're wonderful. They're our sweet companions that bring us so much joy. And we want to say Merry Christmas to all of you right now. So this is Snowball. He's a boy dog. And this dog is here. this is Lucky Girl. And I mean. Jim named her after his dog when he was a little. Lucky. Lucky. That's Lucky right. was my little dog named when her. I was a little boy. Yeah. And uh, I but had that dog for a uh, uh, until I was a, a young teenager. That's right. And this one, she watches over us, protects us. And yeah. this one, he just likes food all the time. What can <laughs> I say? <laughs> yeah. But they give us a lot of unconditional love. And there's nothing like that unconditional love that a dog brings into your life. You just can't believe it. You leave the room for two minutes. You come back. It's like they, you've been gone for, you know, 20 hours. <laughs> That's kind of yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful. W w the things we wanted to talk about over the year this mm -hmm. year is what do we do right and one of the things is we have these two dogs <laughs> and uh, they're funny. a blessing to us yes and uh, they sleep with us I oh know. boy <laughs> He's gonna some be... people don't think that's proper <laughs> but we do uh, and uh, they're my friends they they're so funny, honey. I'm in bed a I lot see you. so <laughs> They'll come up and snuggle up next care. to me. That's right. You, They've yeah. been taking good care of you this year. So that's wonderful. Well, we want to welcome everyone to the program. And our dear friend, Billy Brim, and her eldest daughter, Shelly Brim Harden, okay. is here with us. Dr. Billy Brim is the founder of Billy Brim Ministries, which is based at Prayer Mountain, just up here in the hills of Branson. That's yeah. right. And then we have... Uh, her TV show, Prophetic Witness, is seen on Victory Network. We, it's seen every week. Also features Shelly Brim yes. with her, her daughter. Billy and Shelly lead tours to Israel together for the ministry as well. Billy's granddaughter, Hannah Brim, has her own TV show, Raise Your Voice, heard on RPTL voice of the prophet network and it's doing doing great so we're we're thrilled with that so i want everyone to welcome our special guest today dr billy brim and her daughter and uh billy one aspect of christianity that you strongly believe in is the authority of the believer can you explain exactly what that means today and you've just turned um 82, 82. Wow. right? Oh, yeah. So ha happy, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Yes. She's she's gaining on me. I'm <laughs> I'm going towards the 81. 81, that's right. But anyway, this this <laughs> authority of the believer is so powerful. Yeah. It's something we all need to know about. We need to ha have it in it. And the, the little booklet that uh, Billy's written. Mm -hmm. Today we have a very special offer. You'll receive one of the Authority of the Believer book. And then this little booklet, The Authority of the Believer and How to Use It. That's equipping the saints. And then we also have a special bonus that we're going to throw in with this offer. This is the anointing oil, frankincense and myrrh, the morning side anointing oil, along with these beautiful, these are something, Mom, that we had, yes. that we worked on. These are beautiful hand-blown mm -hmm. vials. And you can gift this and put the anointing oil in this little I beautiful vial this. right here. Mm -hmm. And stay tuned because we are also going to send a bonus of 
the teaching from today's broadcasting with wow. Dr. Billy Brim. We're going to include the teaching of the authority of the believer and how to use it today. And that's a donation of, a, of $45 to the ministry. This is going to help us stay on the air. But this is a message for now, Dad. It and really you even is. said, Dad, you, you called me and you said, we have to get this message out. We have to spread this message and start equipping the saints now. Now. That's I right. had a dream last night. You did, yes. And I saw people giving these out. Yes. Women carrying these in their purse Amen. and all. And so do you have a baker's dozen of yes, this going in one of the Yes, we put it together. It's going to be 13 of the authority of the believer and how to use it booklets. And then we're adding a special gift that's going to be six of the anointing oils along with six of the vials that go along with it. So that's for a hundred dollar love gift. And you're saying, Jim, I want that authority of the believer. I want to know how to use it. And that's what we're going to be talking about and preaching and teaching from Dr. Billy Brem today. Yes. I believe in anointing. Amen. I do too. I yes. Billy, uh, Billy Brim, can I ask you, do you believe in anointing oil? I absolutely do. Of course, anointing is in the Bible all through the Bible. And the word Mashiach, even Jesus, he is the anointed one. And we are the body of Christ, the body of the anointed one. And I do believe in anointing. It speaks of it in the Bible. How can you not believe what's in the Bible? Well, it's important that we anoint with oil yes. I, I believe we can take authority even in our in times of sickness and all and yes. time when people are locked away the power of the bible yeah the power of healing That's in right. the bible and the the, the the bible says the anoint with oil mm -hmm. you, yes. you call the elders That's of the right. church he says is anyone sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, mm -hmm. anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. That's the power that God has given us. That's right. So can you explain the authority of the believer as you explain yes. it into your the books that you have written? Yes, 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 I can explain it. And I want to start with this book. Uh, which is John A. McMillan's The Authority of the Believer. And I just want to start with the preface of it. People skip prefaces, but this tells why we need it. Now, this man passed away in 1956. He was a missionary to the Philippines, to China. He knew about dealing with demons. See, the thing is, right now, much of our problems are demonic. Now, this is his preface. The rapidly approaching end of the age is witnessing a tremendous increase in the activity of the powers of darkness, unrest among the nations, etc. Now, to meet the situation, the Church of Christ needs a new conception of prayer. All prayer is working with God. And one way to work with God is through taking the authority that you have bestowed upon you as a believer. To meet the situation... The Church of Christ needs a new conception of prayer. The urgent call is for men and women wholly yielded to the Lord, whose eyes have been enlightened to see their ministry in the heavenlies, to which they have been called. Such believers may, in union with the great head of the body, exercise an authority to which the powers of the air must give place wherever challenged. Now, I want to read this too from Macmillan's book. And this will explain a lot of things that are happening all around you. It is necessary to state here what is commonly understood by those who carefully study the word, that the kingdoms of this world are under the control and leadership of satanic principalities. He is called, in the New Testament, Satan, the prince of the powers of the air, the prince of this world, the god of this world. Now, how did he get to be that? It was not given to him in the first place. When God created, he actually told me one time, I saw it in a vision, he stepped to the center of a creation, and he made an announcement, he said to me in this vision that shook the world, let us make man in our image 
and let them have dominion over the works of our hands. So God made a dumb man to have dominion over the works of his hands. It is written in Genesis, it is written in Psalms, it is written throughout the world, throughout the word, excuse me. How did that dominion given to Adam, Adam, get into the place where Satan is called the God of this world? The prince of the powers of the air, the authorities of the air. Remember when Jesus was tempted by the devil for 40 days? And one of the temptations the devil said to Jesus was, you just worship me. And he showed him all the kingdoms of the world throughout all the time. He said, I will give you the power over these, for it is delivered unto me. Who delivered it unto him? Not God. Adam. Adam was given the dominion over the world, and he gave it over into the hands of the devil. Now, Adam, Adam was given, and you have a chart that I've made up on this. When the Bible says in the King James, uh, the latter days, it's really saying in Hebrew, the end of days. When Moses was caught up to heaven, he was shown what God had given unto Adam. A six-day work week, if you will, with a seventh day at the end, which we call the millennial reign. Adam had a lease on this earth, and God gave it to him to see what he could do with the earth in six days. God worked six days. And then he rested the seventh. These days, and we find out about them in the Talmud, uh, Sanhedrin 97, these days that were given, and Moses was told it orally, this is a work week. Now, these days are a thousand years long, each one of them. We know that from Peter. We know that from Psalms. A day with the Lord is as a thousand years. A thousand years is as a day. So these six days, he was given a six day, Adam was a six day lease on earth. It was divided into three parts. This is what Moses was told, and it's recorded in the Sanhedrin 97. The first two days are the days of chaos, 2,000 years. Then the word comes, the Torah comes. And then you have two days or 2,000 years of the Torah. And then at the end of the Torah of the 4,000 years, four days, Messiah is to come. Now, there is a note in, this, in the 97 uh, tractate, Anhedrin, a note at the bottom, and it says, he did not come because we were not ready. Well, you and I know that Christianity is based on the fact that he did come. He came at the end of the fourth day. So when you have Peter preaching on the day of Pentecost, he is preaching that these, this is the end of days. And of course, everybody who heard him, they knew about this six-day work week. And he was talking about the, the end of days has begun. The end of days period are the last two days. We are living at the end of the sixth day. 6,000 years since Adam. I believe the earth is much older I believe that there's a lot of time between, uh, as long as science needs, between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. I believe there was a pre-Adamic civilization. But for sure, Adam, Adam, which means man, Adam, was created 6,000 years ago. We're at the very end of Adam's lease. Now, God will not just move in like uh, Satan. He's not a usurper. God moves legally. So... It was delivered over. The authority was delivered over. Now, you've got to think about it like this. Here's earth, and then you have the heavens that are above it. And we know that Paul was caught up to the third heaven. But in these atmospheric heavens around us, there's demonic control. And they are controlling things. They are moving. We are told in Ephesians chapter 2, they work down through the sons of disobedience. So when you see someone on television, you can't even imagine how they're acting like they are or believing like they are. It tells us in Ephesians 2 that the prince of the power of the air is working down through them. So do we just throw up our hands? Is there nothing can be done? No. When Jesus came 2,000 years ago, he defeated Satan. God, the Father, through Jesus, made a show of him openly, triumphing over him in it. And when Jesus came and then he came back in his glorified body 
He said, all authority, I have the keys, and all authority on heaven and earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore. So he, oh, I love to teach in a week or two on the book of Ephesians, because it says that when God raised him up, uh, well, I'll have to quote it for you. God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of glory, give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And then it talks about how God lifted him up and put all things under his feet and, and took him from the depths of hell up to his right hand in heaven. And when he raised the head, it tells us in Ephesians, he raised the body. When he quickened the head, he quickened the body. When he raised the head, he raised the body. When he seated the head, he seated the body in him, Ephesians chapter 1 and 2. So actually, the body of Christ was created when Jesus came up out of the hell and out of that grave. He rose a head over a body. We're the body of Christ. We're the assembly. The Greek word ekklesia or ecclesia, I like that much better translated assembly than church. Uh, we use the word church, and that's okay. We know what we mean. But it really means an assembly. And from the Greek, it means an assembly called out to govern. So we, as a body of Christ, were raised, we were quickened with him, we were raised with him, we are seated with him at the right hand of the Father. We are told in Colossians that we have been delivered out of the realm of darkness and translated into the kingdom of the light, God's dear son. And we are told in uh, Romans 5.17, they which have received of the gift of life, of the gift of grace, uh, abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. They who have received abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in this life through one Jesus Christ. Now, he gave the authority. He got that authority out from the hands of Satan. He transferred it over to his body. And now in the book of Ephesians, it tells us exactly that we are raised with him. All things are under our feet and we are to rule and to reign over him. You don't have to have the devil shooting up your school. You don't have to have the devil coming around your house with all kinds of, well, I, I call it like having a, having a high party at your house. No, you can take your authority, and the Bible tells us exactly. Authority of the believer isn't something that comes because you're a great man or woman of God and you've studied the Bible 49 years. It comes with the new birth. Every person who is born again, has bestowed upon them as a member of the body of Christ. You have bestowed upon you the authority of the believer, but you have to exercise it. It's not the word of God you know. It's the word of God you do that brings victory in your life. The Bible calls us overcomers. It never hints one time that we are to be overcome. We are to overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. It tells us in the book of Revelation that Satan has great wrath, knowing his time is short. He knows when the six days are up. When Adam's lease is up on that sixth day, God is not just letting the devil do this. It's legal. Everything about God and God's workings are legal. And at the end of that lease, when Adam's lease is up, Satan's out of here. The six days is up. I've drawn a little period there, how the last seven years, people call it the great tribulation, uh, without going into any of that. But when that lease is up, the devil will finally end up in the pit for a thousand years. So when that lease is up, and see, he sees it. He knows it. You know when your lease is up. You know if your lease is up at the 30th of January, 31st. So Satan knows, and seeing that his fixed time of his being moved out of here is coming, he's going about on the earth having great wrath. That's what he's doing right now. Uh, he, he's circling all of his forces, bringing them all to bear because he's fighting for his very existence. But you, in the body of Christ, in the, well, in the book of Ephesians, uh, I'll get my little book out here and, and read from it. In the body of Christ, I'm going to, this is how you do the authority of the believer. You pray the prayer every single day in the book of Ephesians. It is a prayer. Um, 
we, but you have to know, and, and I, I might talk a little bit, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this as we go. You start the prayer with Ephesians 1.17, and you ask to God, God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of glory, give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, in the knowledge of Jesus. Let the eyes of my heart be enlightened that I may know what is the hope of his calling. You're going to ask for enlightenment on three things. I've prayed this prayer every day of my life for 40 years, almost every day, more than 40, maybe 50 now, because Brother Hagen, Kenneth Hagen, is the one that said to do it after he had studied Macmillan's books. He saw that there was an ability, there was an authority that believers have they don't even use. No one has authority over the devil but you as believers. But if you don't take it, he's going to run roughshod over you. So. You pray and ask for three things. What is the hope of his calling? The riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Now, here's the one we're talking about today. God, give me revelation on the exceeding greatness of your power to usward who believe. One of the conditions is you've got to believe. I believe. I believe in this power. According to the working of your mighty power, which you wrought in Christ, when you raised him from the dead and set him at your own right hand in the heavenly places, give us some revelation on this resurrection power. But it's to us who believe. This is for me. This is for you. This is for the body of Christ. He wrought this resurrection power in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand far above. The right hand of the Father is the center of power of all creation. And Jesus is seated there. He's above all principality, not just above. Ephesians 1.21, I didn't emphasize that enough. He seated him far above all principality, power, might, dominion, every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet. And he gave him to be the head over all things to the ecclesia, his body. He gave him to be head of, to a body over all things. He gave Jesus head to a body, you and me, over all things. His body is his fullness. He filleth all in all. Going on, you don't stop at chapter 2. And you, happy quicken, who were dead, slain by your trespasses and sins. Verse 4. But listen to this, listen to this. But God, who is rich in mercy and for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, quickened us together with Christ, by grace we are saved, raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. When he raised the head, when he quickened the head, he quickened the body. When he raised the head, he raised the body. When he seated the head, he seated the body together with him. And now you and I in Christ are seated at the right hand of the Father. And it is from there that we exercise our ministry in the heavenlies. From the right hand of the Father, we look down on Satan. We look down on all of his sin. And we say, you're under my feet. Brother Hagin used to say it like this. It doesn't matter if you're the little toenail, if you feel like this. If you feel, you know, I'm not much, but you, you've got to feel that you are much because you're in Christ and you're in the body of Christ. But Brother Hagin would say, even if you think that your place is the little toenail on the left foot, Satan is under your feet. And that's why Jesus said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. He's going about as a roaring lion, but resist. It always says we overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. And because we're in earth suit and Jesus in us, we have the badge of authority on the earth. So I see it, you know, uh, kings sit and reign. They sit on thrones and reign. So I get up every morning. Now, now one thing Macmillan brings out is when he says that he seated you in him, 
He is sharing his throne rights with you. You have throne rights. But if you don't take the authority over the devil in your household, if you don't take the authority over the devil all around about you, nobody else is going to do it. You have to do it, and you can do it. I love what Macmillan says. I got to read you page 27. I give this book to people, and I say, now, you read this book, you take it into yourself, you read it over and over. Shelley reads it all the time. Hers is just, just be draggled. Now, he says this. Do we believe that God has quickened us together with Christ and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus? If we do, our reaction to it will be a fervent quote. And sometimes I just get the book out and read this. Lord, I accept your gracious word. I believe that you have thus wrought for me. In humble faith, I do now take my seat in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus at your right hand. Teach me how to fulfill this sacred ministry, how to exercise the authority which you have entrusted to me. Train me day by day that I may attain to the full stature of the perfect man in Christ so that in me the purpose of the ages may be fulfilled. Amen. The purpose of the ages, we are told in the book of Ephesians, is that we manifest to the principalities and powers the manifest greatness of God. You see, he's waiting on a body that will manifest to him. Manifest him to them. Now listen to this. I really like this. If we are walking in the spirit, our normal life is in the heavenlies. To secure the consciousness of this, there must be the daily acceptance of the fact. Let us morning by morning, as one of our first acts of worship, take our seat with Christ, as suggested in the previous paragraph, and return thanks to God for all it implies. Let us remind ourselves that we are seated far above all the powers of the air, and they are in subjection to us. As our faith learns to use the name and the authority of Jesus, we shall find the spiritual forces yielding obedience in ways that will surprise us. As we continue to abide closely in him, our prayers for the advancement of the kingdom will become less and less the uttering of petitions and will increasingly manifest the exercise of a spiritual authority Hallelujah, that binds the forces of darkness in any part of the world. You, you may have been praying about something, kind of a supplicating prayer, a sometimes even a begging prayer. Now, Brother Hagin gives the example that when he was learning about authority of the believer, and he learned a lot of it from Macmillan, he had a brother, I knew that brother, who was the black sheep, Brother Dub, who was the black sheep of the family. And he prayed for years for him to be saved. He got a hold of this authority. He went and stood in the middle of a room and he said, Satan. And he prayed this prayer. I bind you over my brother Dub's life. In Jesus' name, I demand you let him go. Get your blinders off him. Within a week, Dub was born again. You see? It says in Corinthians that he has a blinding tactic. He said, it says in Corinthians, he has blinded those who do not believe. I see it like this. He is, it says he has blinded the eyes. The God, of this world. Yeah. the God of this world has blinded the eyes of those that believe not. The light of the glorious Lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine unto them. When we were in a taxi cab, we had flown to New York. And we had asked our cab driver if he knew the Lord Jesus as his Savior. And he abruptly answered, no, and I don't want to hear about it. So remember, we just simply grabbed hands and very quietly, but with authority in the name of Jesus, based on that scripture you just talked about in Second Corinthians chapter 4, where it says, the God of this world uses blinding tactics 
to blind people's minds, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine unto them. So you and I, in the back of that cab, very quietly, we just bound the devil in Jesus' name off that man's mind. And by the time he drove us in front of the hotel where we were staying, he got out of the cab, he walked to the back to uh, unload our suitcases, and he said, I want to know about your Jesus. And you were able to lead him to the Lord Jesus Christ, just like that. And you, you know, like I say this, maybe your husband, you know, you've been praying for him for years. You might not want to do it right in front of him. But you could go back into your bedroom or the bathroom and you could say, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you get your hands off my husband's eyes. I bind you in the name of Jesus. You are not going to keep him from seeing the light of the glorious gospel. Then you go out and be nice to your husband. Bless the Lord. Uh, In every case, I, I, I don't know. But you, this is a thing. Now, when I'm sitting there, I sit in the mornings. Shelly and I, we call it ruling and reigning. Of course, she lives across the street from me, but I know she's doing it over there. So I'm sitting in my chair, praying that prayer in Ephesians. God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of glory, give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. And I pray it all the way down through the fourth, sixth verse there in the second chapter. And then I tell Satan what he cannot do. I address him. I say, kingdom of darkness, you listen up. It is written in Colossians that God has translated me out of your authority and out of your realm of darkness, and he has made me fit for the kingdom of his dear son, the kingdom of the light. And he has told me in his letter to the Romans and to me, 517, they which have received abundance of grace, that would be me, and of the gift of righteousness, shall reign in life through one Jesus Christ. Amplified Bible says reign as kings. I'm reigning over you. I'm telling you what you cannot do today. Satan, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you prince of the powers of the air, you're not going to reign over Branson, Missouri. You're not going to act up here over my house and over where I live. In the name, I bind you. You're not bringing any terror tax here. In the name of Jesus in my neighborhood, you cease and desist. And I call you to cease and desist in your maneuvers against my four children, their mates, my 10 grandchildren, their mates, my eight great-grandchildren, and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I lead prayer calls, uh, Jim and Lori. I have people calling in uh, on Wednesdays. We have an emergency prayer call that we can alert thousands uh, to come and call. And, and on that prayer call, I'll have them all put your hands toward Washington, D.C. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, together with our authority as citizens of heaven and citizens of the United States of America, we do hereby bind you. You are not going to act up in, and we name whatever. So we have an authority. We have a corporate authority. And, and oh, I'm so thrilled. I'm so thrilled. You used to call a prayer meeting. You might get a few come, you know, de- very dedicated little ladies. But now, oh, my goodness, they're coming out of the woodwork. We have a a big prayer network, but we're not the only ones. There are lots and lots of them, and some of our networks are all together. People are praying. I'm telling you right now, it's not a time for despondency. It's not a time for no hope. I know some things in the natural, and I know some things in the supernatural. Inside information. Oh, hallelujah, how we do praise him. But the authority of the believer, I want to talk about one more thing here. There are certain qualifications. Of course, there's the number one qualification that you uh, are born again, and you, you have faith, you believe it, you, you approach it in humility, but I want to read you, uh, my son called me this morning, my son Chip, who pastors our church in Collinsville, Oklahoma, and he, he's talking about courage. He said, Mother, in that book, Authority of the Believer by Macmillan, there's something you've got to have when you operate in this. For, see, the devil knows if, you're, if, if, if you mean it or you don't mean it. So here, I'm going to read you this, because he's already said that one of the qualifications is humility. With profound humility, however, there may go uh, to the great boldness in the name. True boldness is faith in full manifestation. When God has spoken, to, to hold back is not humility, but unbelief. 
In the exercise of authority, there is needed a divine courage that fears nothing but God and reaches out strong hands to bind and to restrain all that is contrary to him. But with this courage, there must be a continued and close abiding in God, a spirit that is alert to every urge and check from him, and a mind that is steeped in the word of God. And Chip was talking about, he had watched that movie on Harriet Tubman, little black lady that freed all those slaves and went back and got them. She had these great big brothers. They didn't have that courage. They didn't have that boldness. It's a divine courage. How did she get that divine courage? She had communion with God. So if you're going to be operating at the top of your ability and the authority of the believer, which came to you at your new birth, you must be courageous. You don't back off. You are bold, but you're going to get your boldness because you have a close fellowship with him. You, you maintain your fellowship with God and you have a closeness with the word of God. This is so amazing. So, Amen. but I want you to get what she is saying today. Yes. And I want you to order this. It's been on the screen for $45 gift. And it's not just about money. This is a lot for $45. Yes. And uh, the authority of the believer little book comes with it. And how to use the authority of the believer. Amen. You have the authority. You've got to take this authority. This is one of the secrets that's going to bring you through the days to come. Mm -hmm. We have political systems now that want to destroy Christ, want to destroy the church. But we're going to stand up strong. So it's important for believers to be strong. Amen. And courageous. And to use their authority as sons and daughters of the king. Amen. 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 And so I want you. Amen. And so when you, when you give that $45 today, but the authority of the believer, you get this bundle of today. Yes. You get the teaching of today. Yes. yes. The authority of the believer. That's being right. taught by Billy Brim. There it is right there. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The wow. authority of the believer. And you'll also receive one anointing oil, which is from Israel. And, then and that's taking authority, people. That's Man, right. Yes. I'm going to start jumping up and down <laughs> here. I We're don't know. We're all excited on this side of the camera but, as we are listening to the, the great anointing Billy with Brown. oil, you, you'll get a vial of oil. A beautiful, And the beautiful Bible tells us to anoint oil. with oil. Yes, Call the elders and right. anoint with that's oil. Right. Right. Mothers and dads anoint with oil. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get with that $45, you get one of them, right? Yes, that's, that's right. right. It's time to anoint with it oil. Is. Amen. We have to bring when it you, back. You, when you can't, you can't get to a doctor, you that's can't right. get, Amen. you know, why not get to the great yes. physician? Amen. And you anoint with oil. In fact, I'm going to ask Lori if she would in the next few weeks. To anoint me with oil. Amen. Praise God. Every day she thinks about it. Just yes. come and anoint oh, me. I love it. Yeah. In the house. Yes. Because you know, I, we, huge I haven't been anointing with oil while I was sick, and I think it's time for me to yes. get totally healed. That's right. Amen. And I need this. Amen. And I, I'm, I'm excited because there is power. There is. It's like having a power source in this oil yes, and, and all it is is anointing oil amen. this oil actually comes from yes, israel that's right <laughs> it, it's it's powerful so with this special 45 dollar gift your sowing is under the lord you're giving that's given right. it shall be given unto you pressed down shaken together the bible amen. says it's when you give god gives back but we want you to have the book the authority of the believer this is something that Billy has been teaching on for a long time. That's right. And it's now more important. Powerful. The thing about the word, people, it doesn't grow old. That's no. right. You've no. got to have the authority of the believer. And then you get one of the small books, too, uh, The Authority of the Believer, written by Dr. Billy Brown. Yes. You get that little book that comes with it. That's but right. But the big yeah. thing is for to take the power yes, the that power. you have. Amen. The, yeah. We have another offer. What yeah. do we call it? Yes, this is the authority of the believer and how to use the anointing offer. This is for a $100 love gift. But here's what I love. What do you get? With yes, it? you're going to receive 13 
13 of the authority of the believer and how to baker's use baker's dozens it. that's right a baker's dozen 13 of these booklets along with six of the anointing oils and here's what god spoke to me can i say that yes do it absolutely because he spoke to me last that's night right, he did in the night Amen. in my dreams i know this sounds so strange yeah. but he said i want people and that's why I asked you today if you yes. could do a baker's yes. dozen of the little book. Absolutely. And then people could put them in their purses. That's right. Men could carry them in their pockets that's of right. their jackets. Amen. And you can just, when you're seeing somebody who's down and out, yes. you just say, I want, here's the authority of the that's believer right. as a Christian. This yes. is the power you have. And give them this booklet. Yes. And you have become a missionary. It's, it is written in this book. This is written by Billy Brim. This is so powerful, it is powerful. that I want to shout it out. Yes. Yes. The authority of the believer. And so I want you, uh, you know, let, let's, let's get back, I guess. Billy, I'm going to come right back, back to you. Yes. You've taught for many years about the power of praying in tongues. I'm trying to get people helpful things yes. they can do. You can anoint with oil in your home. You can speak with other tongues. Do you still believe in praying in tongues? Well, uh, absolutely do believe in praying in tongues because it is written, 1 Corinthians 14, 2, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, he speaks not unto men, for no man understands it. Howbeit he speaks to God, divine secrets, the secrets, the mysteries. Actually, that word mysteries, mysterion, means divine secrets. So when we, and then you go on down in 1 Corinthians 14, and it says, when we pray in the spirit, we're praying in tongues. So if any man speak or pray in an unknown tongue, he speaks unto God, not unto men, for no man understands it. How be it in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Now, I want to read to you a prophecy that was given through Brother Hagen at a prayer seminar, uh, Brother Kenneth E. Hagen Sr., speaking by the Spirit, not just speaking words out of your own mind or thinking, but speaking by the Spirit, words that are inspired by the Spirit of God, words that well up from within you out of your spirit, given to you by the Holy Spirit, those words spoken boldly, bring forth great happenings. Ooh, I love that. Those words spoken boldly bring forth great happenings. Another part of the prophecy. Speaking by his spirit, yielding your tongue unto the Holy Ghost, taking time to pray in the spirit, taking time to pray in other tongues will get you tuned up, will edify you, and get your tongue hooked up to your spirit. So then he who dwells in your spirit can give you utterance. Then he takes over and you speak out what he says, not what you think. You speak out what he wants. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jim, an amazing thing has been happening. Of course, I've been praying in tongues since 1967. And of course, he gives you his word. You don't know how to solve everything in this world, but he does. He knows everything going on. He needs words spoken. Words are spirit. And then he can clothe them with flesh. Now, uh, I have a friend. He was supernaturally born again out of the Muslim world. I call him Max. And we pray together a lot. Uh, we pray even in tongues on our Wednesday noon prayer. And on our other prayer calls, Wednesday noon is streamed live. And about a month ago, God told Max, I want you to start listening to what Billy Brim says. So Max does. So we get into that praying in spirit. I mean, praying in the spirit, you know, we're in the spirit. And Max starts hearing me speak Arabic. And he translates what I'm hearing, or what I'm saying, excuse me. And I remember Shelly, uh, I don't even know if Shelly's mic is on, but I can read, uh, we're having a little technical difficulty, okay. but get close to me. All right. And uh, if uh, I can remember some of the words that were said, started four weeks ago, 
And the Lord really showed us that he wanted to give us some revelation. Sometimes it's a known tongue. Sometimes it says, it says there in the book of Acts, they heard them speak in their own languages. It doesn't even say they spoke in the own right. languages, but they heard them speak. So he, as we've been praying about the president and we've been praying about different things that are going along, the Holy Spirit has said to us through the, uh, when Max would hear it in, uh, in Arabic, uh, several things. One of them was head, crown, rise up, uh, kings are arising. And I think he meant us, the kings and priests that we are. He told us one day, he heard it in Arabic. Do not listen to the news. Drink my waters. Drink my waters. In other words, get your information from him. Over and over comes the word victory, 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 victory. And we had someone in Germany. And after Max heard me say victory seven times, the person in Germany heard it. In German, it is already there. It is already there. But it's so interesting, the revelation that God is giving us through what is happening. It's almost like tongues of interpretation coming when I am praying in tongues and God is giving us revelation. I'm telling you, I have no cause for despair. What were some of the others? Well, I just remember uh, yesterday we had a meeting, yes. a prayer meeting, uh -huh. and Max was there. Uh -huh. And you had called on my sister Brenda, uh -huh. and uh, she began to pray in other tongues and the uh, phrase, move on. Move on, move on, move on, move on, and then um, come up, come, come up. up, and we will not be slaves. We will not be slaves. We will not be slaves. And then Hannah began to pray. In other times. Hannah began to pray. And She's the one that has the program right here on your network. And she began to pray. Kids, generations, the next generation, the next generation. And, those, and this was in Arabic. And this was in Arabic. And she doesn't know Arabic. She doesn't know Arabic. I think God was showing, uh, and here's what he does. He takes our words that he gives us. Something about the rule is it has to be spoken. You have what you say. The fruit of our lips. Jesus said, be created. God said, let there be light. He spoke. He showed us how things work. So tongues is a way that he gets what he wants, just like it said in this prophecy. You speak out what he wants, not uh, not what you think, but somehow he needs it spoken. Now, Jim, I want to go back to something that I think is so apropos to right now. Kenneth E. Hagin gave this prophecy in 1963. In 1963, he doesn't have a well-known name, Kenneth E. Hagin. In fact, this, this prophecy right now tells that God's going to broaden his ministry. But it, 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 this is when he's just going around from church to church. And this prophecy came. Actually, Jesus caught him up. Now, it's going to talk about socialism. It's going to talk about communism. And it's going to talk about the answer to it. Listen to, and you know he was a, he's a prophet for sure. And he, said, he heard God say, come up, come up hither. I went up and I was in the air and stood with him, the head of the church, even the Lord Jesus Christ in the air. As I looked down upon the ground, I could see as a map laid out before me the entire nation, all the states of the continental United States. As I looked, he said, Behold, son, and I will show you what shall come to pass, and that which the eyes of many shall see. There came a dark hand up out of the ocean from the east, even from the Atlantic Ocean. It came up out of the sea, and it arose into the air and became a dark cloud over the whole atmosphere. I said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? He spoke unto me, son, that is the darkness of atheistic communism that is sweeping across the nation, even in the minds of men in high places and politicians with great power. And this nation shall lose liberties that you have now. They shall be seized and taken from you. Communistic-inspired hatred among races shall cause greater turmoil than your nation has ever seen heretofore. It is not the will of God, but men's hearts are perverse, and they walk without the love of God and seek to have their own way, and so it shall be worse than you have ever seen. And I said, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, is there a remedy? Is there a remedy? What shall the answer be? Do we have nothing to look forward to but this? 
I looked into the spirit realm and I saw falling upon that mountain a ball of fire from heaven. The closer to the earth, it got bigger. And then it came to the earth and it divided into small balls or sparks of fire and fell upon men. I saw an army of men rise up and it seemed as though their hands were fire. And there set upon their heads tongues of fire. Before the worst shall come, before the day of darkness, these men shall go forth and carry the fullness of my truth and fire, not only to the states of this nation, but to other places. All right, so it is a reference to what happened in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. Is there an answer to all this, Lord? Yes. Men praying in the Holy Ghost, men moving in the Holy Ghost, men with the fire of God upon their head. Oh, praying with boldness, like that prophecy said that he gave later on, 20 years later on. Praying with boldness in the spirit. Oh, and such a prayer is coming forth right now. Praying in tongues. Not what your head thinks, but what God wants spoken into this earth. I'm thinking about this prophecy that came to Brother Hagen in 1963, which we're seeing happening right now. It's socialism that's trying to come. I went to Soviet Russia for 10 years, 11 years every year during the KGB days. And if you'll remember George Washington's prophecy, it spoke about a red cloud that was going to come over us in the end. This is the one inside. We had an underground church that we went to. Our children, my grandchildren, thought that I went to uh, rabbit holes. But this is an underground service. We're secretly there. Socialism. I saw it with my own eyes. It doesn't give you privileges. It takes them all away. These people are hiding to have church, hiding. And we had to look out the window every so often and see if, it, if we were being followed. You see the man there on the front, the white gentleman with no fingers? Uh, he had lost his hand in, a, in an accident at a factory. They didn't have any safety guards. We always went to the head of the uh, a printing press for the underground church. But anyway, this man came and spoke to me in English. He said, Biblia, Biblia, first in Russian, Bible, Bible. And then he spoke perfect English to me, and he said, can I have your Bible? He said, the Lord told me when I was a young man, if you will learn English, I will bring you a Bible. So I took my Bible, my Bible that was all marked up, and I handed it to that man. I want to show you another picture, 15. Uh, number 15, we saw this everywhere we went. We saw huge pictures of Lenin, huge pictures. See the windows? That's in a great, big, huge uh, days of the Tsar building. Can you see from those windows and that big building how big this picture of Lenin is? And then all the workers are there on the side. Uh, something uh, calling reset um, is happening, and we saw it. It's not a conspiracy theory. Uh, they're leaders of this world, and they're very open about it. And they said, we're going to put everything on reset, and uh, you won't have anything. People don't need anything. Uh, everybody will be on the same. They will have nothing. They will be happy. Oh, socialism. Oh. Antichrist. Oh, all this. Now, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians that we are to hold back the Antichrist until that which holds them back is taken out of here. Second so, Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians, I said, I said, uh, thanks. Now, that's why I take Shelley everywhere. She's a great preacher, but she also keeps me straight. So, in 2 Thessalonians, it says, regarding the mystery of iniquity, remember what 1 Thessalonians, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 2 says? He that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks unto God. He speaks not unto men, no man, and understands them. How be it in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. There are several things. Just go in your concordance and look up mysteries. And you will find that God calls his secrets in the New Testament mysteries. And he has the mystery of the church, Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's called the hidden mystery. He has the mystery of Israel. He calls it that in Romans 11. And he calls the mystery of iniquity in Second Thessalonians. So sometimes when you're praying in, in the spirit and you're praying in tongues, you will be praying even about the Antichrist. Uh, we do it with our own minds. We sit in our chairs of authority. Uh, not just the Antichrist, but the Antichrist spirit. Anti-anointing. Christ means anointing. Of course we anoint. Of course we anoint with oil. He's against all anointing. But we are not um, powerless. We are, and I better show you a picture of, of Pavo. Uh, he was the uh, underground. We always went to him because Pavo was the head of the underground press. This time we were there. Um, 
he had gotten uh, some ink. No, we brought him in ink. He had gotten, that's my husband over uh, second from the left. Um, he had he had gotten hold of some paper and he would print Bibles and they had a portable press they carried around. We took them in some ink, underground ink, and God translated him. We messed up the translation. We didn't know. Um, we would go in and we would take blue jeans and Levi's and things like that. And we would train them uh, on the, we would trade them on the black market for Rupal. And we bought Pavel a car. And number 13, we're giving him this car. It was a terrible, tragic mistake. Nobody in, is in, in, in Russia had cars. He, uh, it was a curse to him. He never knew anything about cars. He couldn't make the car go. And when it would break down, there were no parts for it. But we thought we were doing well. Bless the Lord. That, that is shown on number 13, the car that uh, we gave to him. Bless the Lord. So wow. socialism, I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes. And it has not been that long ago. So what did the prophecy say when Brother Hagen was told it was going to come forth in the end? People with fire upon their heads, tongues of fire, are going to stop this until we, you know, we go home. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Wow. Man, I'll tell you what, Billy Brim is a gem. Yes. And uh, yes. she is Amen. the Powerful. treasure. Yes. She is like uh, the queen mother yes. of, uh, That's of right. preaching the gospel. That's today. right. And yeah. Today, and we got to sit at her feet and learn today. Amen. From get this Dr. Pat Billy Brim. product from her. Yes. Because hide this in your. This yes. is stuff that you live by. I yes. love this. I'm going to be preaching and teaching this more and more Amen. as I live this and take the authority of me. Could we pass a, everything a on? That's right. Yes. And that's yes. why we got the, the, the people passing out the authority that's right. of the book. Yes, that's 13. You know? and that's and, right. And all this in this package. Our time is up with Dr. Billy Brim and with Shelly. Yes. We love you so much. God loves you. He really does. Bye-bye for today. Bye-bye. We love you.